Thank you, Sujit. Uh, good to have you join us here at the Enterprise Innovation Summit 2021. Now we have great giveaways on Twitter and you can tweet with the hashtag EIS2021 to win prizes on the hour. So do let us know what you're thinking. Also, drop by the virtual stalls. There are goodies there as well for filling up feedback forms. So tap away on your mobile phones while we bring you our next speaker here on the summit. Now, he is an information technology assurance professional with uh, extensive experience in managing IT assurance and information security and policy related assignments across regions. He has over a decade of experience in understanding business requirements and IT risks, facilitating IT and business process interactions, guiding team members on complex projects and providing innovative IT solutions in product management. Please welcome Mayuran Palaniswami, the partner and national lead for data privacy at KPMG India. Thank you, Ashwin. Thanks for the wonderful opportunity to talk to many people here. Uh, so this is a topic which is quite close to my heart. I mean, uh, we have been we have been doing a lot of privacy work for the last seven or eight years now, but uh, I, I believe the privacy engineering is going to be the future uh, because that's going to give a lot of convenience for many people to kind of move away from a lot of compliance efforts, right? So that's why I thought I'll share my thought process and views and some of the good practices and frameworks which could be very, very useful for the listeners here, right? With that, let me give a little bit of story about uh, how privacy has evolved, right? I think it is very important to understand the past when, when we talk about the future, right? So initially, uh, when GDPR came into existence and uh, one of the uh, myths everybody had is that, I mean, by doing your right uh, privacy notice or getting the consent or appointing the privacy officer solves the problem. Right. Slowly from there, people realize that uh, they need to have a framework as well. Uh, it is not about just appointing the private data privacy officer or kind of uh, having the notice and the uh, uh, other stuff around the more, more kind of uh, communication stuff. Right. It's more than that. So beyond that, when it comes to the third phase, we understood that the regulations have started asking for a lot of stuff, including the knowing the data through data uh, records of processing activities or doing a data protection impact assessment, right? So after this, uh, there, there are organizations who thought about how do I report to the regulator in a frequent basis? Right? How do we give comfort to the regulators in terms of my compliance? So while we look at this, one of, one of the things which came into existence is that while I am being prepared for privacy compliance, uh, how does my third parties do, right? So then people started focusing on the contracts and SLAs with the third party. But if you look at the last one, last, uh, sorry about that, the, the last uh, uh, part of my, this particular slide, we are talking a little bit of the future. The future is around two things. One is that uh, how do we kind of uh, enhance the solutions to be more privacy compliant by nature, right? Uh, I mean, uh, this is where the privacy engineering becomes a big uh, thing to kind of support. Second is that, uh, I mean, how do we how do we kind of uh, uh, use data governance mechanism for better privacy compliance, right? So we are going to slightly deep dive into the last two points because this is what I believe is going to be the future of privacy. And uh, most of the organizations, especially the product companies are kind of uh, looking forward to embark into the journey now. Some of them are already uh, done this. So if I move to the next slide, so what are the challenges which we are seeing in the industry now, right? What, what is the challenge with compliance? or the privacy teams are facing within the organization. One is all of us know, right? I mean, while we are in a, in a kind of a digital transformation, we are slowly moving towards digital acceleration. So the, the amount of data which gets accumulated is, is humongous. So how do we manage the data? Because a lot of data which is going to come in uh, could fall under the categories of personal information or sensitive personal information. Second is that how privacy and the business as usual processes can be brought together. Currently, if you see, uh, most of the business processes are kind of not uh, aligned to the privacy expectations of the end consumers or the organization, right? Mostly the functional things are taken care of, but when it comes to compliance and privacy, there's always a kind of a lack of integration between these two. Third area is that preserving privacy in the data monetization practices. While the intention is to analyze the data, get the insights and see whether we can monetize it further, uh, but the key challenge is that uh, how do we still preserve the privacy of the data, right? Because you may be using a lot of personal information for that. And fourth key element, which we see as the biggest challenge is the, uh, the third party risk is involved, right? Because uh, 
there is no way a business can run without sharing data with a third party these days right it could be a product company service or a company the third party is a significant role so they need to make sure that uh, uh, whatever the risks are coming from them are also managed in an appropriate manner fourth is, fifth is the the emerging technology for data processing so a lot of new technologies are coming in you're talking about blockchain ai so on so forth uh, and uh, many many regulations are really talking about these new age technologies as well when it comes to how the privacy need to be preserved within this technology and the last one i don't have to kind of emphasize too much on that all of us understand that the privacy landscape is evolving uh, very rapidly uh, i mean while we see that from 2017 to now many countries have come up with their own regulation right and this is getting more granular because there are a lot of contextual privacy aspects are coming when it comes to uh, uh, e marketing or a kind of using a ai technology right so countries are getting into that level of detail so this is going to be a challenge right uh, and uh, many many of us have already navigated it and there are companies who are kind of in the process of navigating so what could be one of the solutions right so this is where i believe that privacy engineering becomes a big big uh, boon for many organizations right so what is privacy engineering right in in, in a simple sense like uh, how the security is kind of embedded into many of the uh, software development life cycle or any sort of development processes how do we bring privacy into that right uh, rather than in the current scenario most of the time the product is built then you think about privacy because the client may be asking about privacy right when you get into contract people may ask saying that what is it uh, how does the product kind of preserve the privacy so that is where you start thinking about it but instead of that can we start thinking ahead right can we kind of bring uh, uh, like how dev sec ops works right the privacy ops is also becoming a huge thing now where the privacy kind of embed into the entire journey of development rather than you think about the privacy towards the end so what are the three or four elements which is uh, going to help you to kind of start with your privacy engineering journey right uh, i mean uh, not in particular order but i would say that the, these these three elements are critical for us to kind of uh, 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 bring in privacy engineering into your organization one is that uh, privacy based design as a concept right i think many of us understand what is privacy based design right it's nothing but you kind of keep the privacy aspect when you kind of design the product and develop the product test and throughout the life cycle of the product second is that what are the privacy enhancing technology which you might have to leverage on when it comes to uh, kind of uh, uh, building a product with with a capability to preserve privacy and third the most critical one is having a broader privacy program because uh, th this is largely in my view a, a top down approach uh, rather than bottom up approach so that that can be depicted in my next slide So if if you see the left side, so it all starts with a proper enterprise privacy program, right? Because uh, the vision needs to be set there, the direction needs to be set at that level. Then obviously you you move to the privacy enhancing technologies. So when I say tech, privacy enhancing technologies, it could be your uh, tools to anonymize data, it could be a tools to uh, encrypt the data, so on and so forth. Largely, uh, there's a very thin line between the privacy enhancing technologies and some of the security products in the market. because the security products also can of function as uh, uh, solutions to enhance privacy within an organization and the third most critical is that i think this is where we kind of uh, get into the details of how do we bring privacy into the life cycle of the product development right so these are the three elements so in the right side what you see is a framework i mean this is not a kpmg framework but uh, i thought this would be a very simple one and easy one to understand for anybody how this really works on the ground as a framework and and again i would like to emphasize this is a framework not a guideline so each organization will have to think about uh, developing a guideline which will work for them in in their environment so uh, if if i jump into the steps here right the privacy requirement definition has to happen at the early stages of the product uh, conceptualization right because uh, before you understand the requirements you need to also understand the privacy requirements of the consumers in the product not only functional requirements so currently there is a lot of focus on security so my belief is that this is going to get extended to cover the privacy elements as well and obviously when you build uh, understand the requirements your system architecture and the design need to talk the same language right so that is where the privacy design and the implementation becomes a critical one so you you design a product 
keeping or develop a product keeping the privacy requirements in mind right it could be encryption it could be anonymization so on and so forth so you make sure that that is also kind of embedded into the product and when it comes to the uh, for the system integration uh, test and evaluation so you you need to have sufficient testing done to see the privacy capabilities of the product rather than only the functional or the security capabilities right so this is this is the pay probably the privacy engineering has to be embedded into the overall product life cycle right so if i move further so how does it work right one of the pillars i spoke is about the privacy by design right so all of us are familiar with privacy by design so this is uh, kind of uh, developed developed by uh, well respected uh, uh, and kabukian right many of us know uh, her in the privacy world so what are the principles these are principles again not clear guidelines because uh, these concepts have, can be interpreted in many ways and implemented within the organization as you want so there are seven steps or seven principles she is talking about your privacy by design should be proactive and not reactive as i mentioned earlier this can't be a bolt on activity you have to start thinking about it from the time you think about the platform right and you kind of bring in preventive controls and not uh, remedial aspects uh, of of kind of managing privacy second is privacy should be a default setting right because if, if you want to kind of further dilute re, re, based on your risk appetite you can do that but your first instance is going to be kind of a uh, fully uh, protected privacy environment and the third is we we saw in the framework earlier the privacy the the the, the privacy has to enter into the design stage right? you don't think about privacy once the design is over and you get into the development right it has to be thought at the design stage and fourth is the visibility and transparency right this is extremely important because uh, i mean as as a consumer i would like to know that what is happening with my data right if, if an organization is collecting my data Uh, I would I'd be very very keen to know that what and all they are doing, who is accessing, so on and so forth. So I should be given access to that level, so I know all this information uh, upfront, rather than I go and ask for an organization saying that what are you doing with data. So to that extent, it has to be visible and transparent. And uh, security plays a very very critical role in any privacy journey because I would say it's the kind of the backbone of the privacy. Uh, I mean, you can't you can't really separate security and privacy. so the the data protection part throughout the life cycle of data uh, in the system has to be given a lot of importance with many controls including encryption anonymization uh, which of is relevant which of is appropriate right it is not that we have to blindly apply the control we have to think about what is required to protect the data and what is that it it is not going to kind of impact the business as well right because uh, this the intention of privacy engineering or any sort of privacy concept is not to kind of curb down the business it is to kind of enhance the business with the with the compliance required and the sixth uh, element is the uh, full functionality uh, basically the the controls you put in place should not impact the functionality of the system right while you keep privacy in the core as a core part of the system it should not become something because of privacy or compromising on the functionality of the system seventh one extremely critical in my view is that how do we respect the user privacy right i mean keep the user as the center of the uh, uh, the entire thinking uh, automatically i think the rest of the things will fall in place right if i have to protect my client's data then it these form of things how and all and what and all i need to do to go do those steps so if i move to the next uh, slide which is around the privacy enhancing technology uh, so privacy enhancing technology is extremely critical because uh, organizations who are not really able to embark into uh, privacy engineering right away i think this is a kind of a immediate uh, relief for them they can look at some of the privacy and the technologies and bring them into the uh, various stages of the life cycle of the processing so what what is that we are trying to kind of achieve right the core principles are primarily uh, the data security has to be maximized and uh, you also try to apply the data minimization a uh, principle right you don't collect more data or process beyond what is uh, expected to be uh, processed third is uh, the the point around the empowering the individuals to control uh, and and kind of they decide the purpose of their data i mean it's not about just you give the data to an organization and you lose control of the data right so th- these are the things which are very very critical from the privacy enhancing technologies point of view so what is that we want to kind of achieve mainly three objectives 
unobserved will be basically you don't end up uh, uh, give a chance for anybody to observe an individual through this technology second is unlinkability so you you kind of remove the linkage between data and the individual so technically uh, uh, an individual cannot be identified and finally the anonymity right i mean all all of them have very uh, close linkages uh i mean in in many way it may sound very similar but in in the enhancing privacy enhancing technology point of view these things are kind of the critical objectives which we are trying to achieve these are some of the examples uh, obviously uh, i mean i, I don't uh, or personally uh, endorse or any sort of this about this platform so these are uh, some of the uh, privacy enhancing technology or i would say that uh the the privacy compliant tools right there are browsers which are privacy compliant that means they, they don't allow any cookies to come in or track any individual so if somebody is keen to kind of protect the privacy that could be one of the options they have so similarly across various areas including the personal data economy uh, privacy assistance and there are a lot of private communities right where you can create so the data is kind of protected in such a way that nobody else can kind of access the data and the privacy is preserved within the particular group and uh, there are a lot of automated compliance governance uh, platforms uh, which is uh, again helping significantly in the privacy enhancing technology just to ensure that the sustainability of the privacy is taken care of within the organization uh, i'm sure that all of us are familiar with the data anonymization tools and uh, there are a lot of dev privacy tools now like uh, devsecops platforms right and and there are a lot of uh, capabilities getting built around this as well okay so what is the uh, right path for privacy sustenance uh, i mean while while we are talking about these concepts these are not something which you can take and just and apply in an environment right it has to go through its own journey and uh, what we are doing here is that quickly comparing the effectiveness of the privacy enhancing technology and what sort of uh, system design requirement it will it will require right as you see, see go right from the level 1 the so level one is primarily the privacy management systems which are straightforward your access controls uh, uh, things around data quality encryption so on and so forth and level two is slightly deeper which touches the uh, the data part right the data separation part uh, into kind of how do you segregate the data right division of id domain and pseudo id domain so on and so forth and level three is slightly uh, advanced in terms of privacy management systems where we are talking about the data management tools there are a lot of data management tools i mean if you remember the first slide i took about uh, spoke about is about uh, uh, many organizations are looking at uh, uh, data governance as a solution for better privacy right so this is this is getting more prominent now uh, because uh, this is this is how the the belief has evolved right or practically people have seen that there is more merit in focusing on data governance rather than just focusing on privacy compliance right so th these are some of the things and finally the level 4 is around the data anonymity uh, so this is basically i would say the most uh, advanced situation of privacy right where you technically don't uh, or delete the data as soon as the uh, data is used right or or you don't kind of uh, recording or reserving uh, kind of uh, personal information you kind of use it consume it on, on point in time and move on right i, I would say this is slightly far fetched uh, but uh, Uh, this is what is going to help the organization in future because the amount of time and effort spent on privacy compliance is becoming huge for complex environments so the privacy engineering can uh, really really help them to bring that effort to an extent but uh, as i mentioned earlier it, it is not a kind of a, a, a push button where you push and things happen it is going to be a journey for many organizations so the final one is around the the uh, the privacy uh, program at the enterprise level right uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, this is extremely critical because the the idea the vision the mission has to set at this level this level right it can't it can't start at the uh, uh, your development process it has to start at the organization level right with the right set of people right set of governance so i'm just showing a couple of uh, views around the the governance forum right what sort of governance should happen there should be privacy, privacy council there should be privacy management group who are basically the ones who are driving the initiatives in the organization and uh, privacy champions uh, including uh, uh, process around the development uh, system design so on and so forth where they kind of become the uh, torch bearers of privacy within the respective function 
And on the right side, what you see is the privacy management framework. I mean, this is a KPMG proprietary privacy management framework, which we have been using for uh, many client uh, engagements uh, to help them to develop their privacy uh, processes, right? What you see in the front face of the, that particular cube is around the various domains. Uh, I mean, you would see most of the domains, uh, which, which is quite relevant, which is kind of, can be easily connected to many of the regulations we have. Uh, things around privacy by design, because GDPR is talking about privacy by design. And security for privacy is, again, a key pillar, as I mentioned. It can be a great backbone for any uh, privacy initiative. And on the top of the cube, you see the uh, generally accepted privacy principles. So this is also quite consistent. Uh, even the regulations uh, have different uh, 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 principles. I would say, by and large, these are derived from the uh, generally accepted privacy principles. On the right side, the, the, the phase primarily talks about what is that uh, we, we help organizations, right? Uh, in terms of uh, building or transforming the privacy journey or, or kind of advising them in terms of privacy engineering. So this is what I wanted to cover today uh, in terms of my, my learning so far from the privacy engineering point of view, but I'm sure that many of you would have a lot of uh, uh, other experience around privacy engineering. Uh, it would be great to kind of get your perspective, uh, what are the ways and means we can. And, and as, as a privacy community, we can learn from each other and kind of enhance ourselves. Thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity. It was a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you.